Hello guys, so in this video, I'm going to be having a conversation with a good friend of mine, Mr. Heavy Rain Veduti. He's a photographer, a filmmaker, um, he's in Abuja, Nigeria, an all-around great guy, very creative, he's been my buddy for quite a number of years now. We just decided to jump on a video together to talk about an issue that you know affects many creatives out there, whether you're a filmmaker or a photographer, I'm sure you can identify with the subject matter that we're discussing today. I hope um, you will enjoy the video, so stay tuned. Hi John, what's up, how are you doing? Have started? Yes, we started. <laughs> you guys should forgive us because this is my first YouTube channel recording, so I have no idea how to go with it, so bear with me and we are going to talk and roll with the punches here. Mr. Rain, Mr. Veduti, it's good to be on the call with you. Yeah, good to, good to be here. We've been having conversations around our crafts as photographers and uh, one of the things that we're always talking about is um, how sometimes you lose that creative edge, you lose that desire to create, almost like you get bored with the whole thing. Some people call it a creative block, right? What are your thoughts around that kind of thing? What has been your experience? Yeah, I, I think it happens to everybody. It happens to every creative that from time to time it happens for different reasons for different creatives because sometimes it gets monotonous the workflow is workflow is good to maintain a system so that once something starts like a project comes up you know what to do when to do it and then deliver on time to your client yeah but when when that happens over time it now becomes like a routine lifestyle oh you go to the studio you do that shoot you select the pictures, you edit them, you deliver the next client calls before you know one year has gone by and you've been doing the same rinse and repeat thing over and over and over again. Oh, and it's yeah. easier to get stuck in the in the first wheel or Ferris what wheel, they yeah, call yeah. that in no, not Ferris wheel. Okay. Something wheel, sure. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I think creativity comes from change. You understand? Surprising yourself, that excitement of, oh, there's this new thing I have to do and, and all of that. And also when what you do as a creative becomes more of work you start to look at it without love in your eyes again you start to look at it like stress like oh god i have to do this again do you understand i don't know whether you understand what I'm oh, yeah i totally understand and i mean i've been through my own period right of like especially like that was like three four years ago i found it hard to motivate myself to get to the studio i found it hard to to respond to clients inquiries i found it as in I was just losing that drive, that motivation. And the worst thing was that, apart from the fact that I was losing the drive and motivation to keep doing photography and videography as, commercial, as in commercially as a business, even I found it hard even myself to pick up my camera to go and shoot for myself. So it was more like a total creative block. And one of the things that you said that reminded me just now that I think I was thinking was responsible was that sometimes when you mix art and money, yeah. art and, and, and the drive to make money, it sort of pollutes that love. If you want to do your art, do it separately. If you want to run a business, run it separately. But you know, unfortunately, we're combining our passion into business, right? So that's why it's difficult. So basically, basically what you're saying is statistically, the starving artist is more of a creative than the thriving artist. <laughs> 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 you know, something like that. You know how they're portrayed in movies now. The 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 the, the true artist. He's he, he doesn't dress flashy. He doesn't even have it. Yeah, true. He has. He's living in a one. What they call those apartments where you have everything in the apartment, and all he does is just create. And he doesn't even care about selling his work when he goes for exhibitions, as against somebody who is doing it commercially. But you know, my point is that I think as creators we get to that point where sometimes we lose the initial the first love for for the art we're so carried away with running the business meeting clients de demands trying to grow our businesses and then it all piles up and when it piles up you find uh, you cannot function again or something like that something like that yeah so that, that happens to me too it happens to me as well it happens to me more times than than it should nowadays compared to the earlier days when you had so much energy to run up and down and do but see, like you said then we're not getting as much booking so what we're shooting was basically for us to give us pleasure so now you have to deal with client expectations your followers what they're used to you don't want to change it because sometimes when you're used to a particular style and you change it and your guys will be like so why did you do something else meanwhile you are trying to be creative 
and step outside your comfort zone. You understand? So I, I think it's good to, as a solution for me, I think it's always good to always try to, to create a space for you. That hasn't worked 100% for me because I've created a, a separate handle for me and I have not posted anything on it. Before we decided to do this video, we had a conversation around the fact that you've been finding it hard to create stuff. I mean, you even say, okay, I am even trying, you know, I, I'm still doing my YouTube videos, I put things out there once in a while. But for you, why, why do you think you're really finding it hard to like put content out there on your page, for instance, or create, create new, new stuff? Primarily, one of the main things is like, especially when it comes to expanding the scope of our creativity, because we, we both started out as um, photographers, we spread into filmmaking and documentaries and the rest of them now. So like, because of the space we are in now, there's things to do are so many that we do not, I, say, I feel like I don't know which one to pick. I think sometimes when the tasks are so many and it's overwhelming, you end up not being able to, you know how like you have a lot of work to do and you just said, okay, I'll just lie down and sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get, so yeah, so like me doing this with you now is me deciding to, you know what, YouTube, I cannot use French, but just just, just get, jump get right in, do something. just get up and do something, you understand? So that, that comes, that brings into um, light the whole co collaborating with people and looking for people that are doing stuff to, to inspire you to do other stuff. So you're my inspiration right now. That's why I'm here. Good to know. <laughs> oh, it's flashy. <laughs> <laughs> this topic is is not new it's not going to be new to many creators out there personally um i think the times i've suffered a creative block mostly is like you said like when you get too um locked down in the routine right you're doing the same thing over and over and over again it sort of dulls your your appetite for the work and especially when it's now made complex with clients trying to make cl clients happy and um, getting your money and all of those things but then I think the other times when I, I've, I've felt a bit stuck is um, <laughs> maybe those moments when I'm asking myself the big whys, like, why am I alive? Why am I this? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so sometimes when you get into that mode, you question everything and you're struggling to create. And I think lastly, for me, it's again, just maybe, maybe just getting weary and, and getting tired, which is human nature, which is natural. Sometimes you just get tired and uh, you need a break or something like that. I don't know. So how about you? What's been your own experience? Yeah, yeah. Like you said, I think doing the same thing over and over for a couple of years, because we've not been shooting for a year or two. You get, we've, I think we've been shooting for almost like 10 plus years. That's a lot of time, time, man. So 2011. That's a lot of time to be doing something. And the fact that we are still doing what we are doing means we're actually crazy in love with this thing we are doing. So the the, the, the fact that you've been doing it for a while, yes, definitely is, it, it will always bring you in that funk. But we, you always have to learn how to push through it. What I do to cope with it is, for example, sometimes I actually do the weirdest things. Before Nigeria got to what Nigeria is today, road trips used to be the perfect thing to clear my, my yeah, block. Yeah, yeah, I remember Just I used to, being used stuck, to travel. Yeah, being stuck, being stuck in a car after pressing your phone for like 30 minutes to an hour and you're tired of pressing your phone and you just stop and just look and just see, see the country, see people, look at mountains, imagine what they are going through. I think imagination is a big part in, in unlocking your block, you understand? Just passing a village, seeing one kid running around, rolling his tire, wondering, oh, what would this kid be when he grows I up? I like that, unlocking your block. <laughs> so you're like, what would this kid be when he grows up? <laughs> Is he going to leave this community and come to the city and become the next president or, or own a business or just that? And before you know, your mind has gone places. So that, your mind going places. Imagination is actually creativity inside your head. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think it kind mm -hmm. of unclogs your your pipes yeah. if i were to say for your creative juices to flow why are you laughing at my <laughs> yes yes i'm lucky your pipe yes yeah but now i, yeah. I don't really travel <laughs> yeah like, nowadays i don't really travel much by road because like nigeria everybody has traveled as anything nigeria except you're going by uh, it's too short for you to really experience anything do you understand yeah so but though if you go to a new place meet new people i think that also helps and especially meeting creatives you understand talking to your your people in the industry that shoot asking questions look oh how do you do this oh you're going for a shoot let me come with you let me see how your mind works it might open up a door that you never expect you understand 
So, and yeah, so that helps changing your environment, talking to other people that are in the industry, also following people that inspire you, the kind of work that they do inspires you. When you look at it, you be like, oh, I want to do this. How did this person try? You try and break it down, try and achieve it. In the process of doing like a deconstructive um, re engineering, photography wise, you can now discover something or find yourself, I guess. So, that, those are some of the things that I do basically to help to to move forward. Like now, I'm doing this video with you. This is the first ever me in front of camera. This is weird for me. I prefer to be behind the camera. That is where I belong. <laughs> yeah. But, but you're pushing me now, for example, to try and go out and create content. Don't care about what people think, say, do, or feel. Sometimes you're the one judging yourself. Nobody cares. Do you understand? Yeah. So, like, just put out something out there. You get. So, just create. I like what you said about changing your environment. I think that helps travel man travel there's nothing like that boosts your mind and refreshes you like travel like going to a new place and you know the funny thing eh, when we talk about travel we're not talking about going to seashells or going to some exotic island right just travel to sokoto travel to plateau state see people in their villages see those beautiful huts under a tree and you see those children running around barefoot playing you see that guy riding his bicycle all the way from the farm all those things for me i find that they they stimulate my my, my creativity and all that. Alongside the things you spoke about, one of the things that helps me personally, one of the things I have done to get my juice back is to do personal projects. Your juice back. <laughs> okay. Personal projects. <laughs> so like I could decide okay. that, okay, for the next 10 days, I'm just going to shoot black and white. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I just change the settings on my camera and everything I shoot in black. So when I start seeing everything, the things I normally take pictures, yeah, when I see them in black and white, it just, it does something different to you, you know, you now begin to see things in, in a different way. And then maybe I could, um, some other challenge, maybe just take pictures of plants or something. As in, I think one of the ways you can really get, get yourself going is, especially if you're a photographer who runs a studio or you're doing a business or you're a videographer, filmmaker, you, you do this commercial work. I think one of the important things to do is to have a personal project of your own that you're working on. Nobody's paying you for it. No pressure. You don't even have to feel pressure to post it on Instagram, right? Just for you, just for your portfolio, just for your collection. And then I think the other thing that I've tried that helps is it's much the same way reading gives me a, a mind reboot. Looking at other people's work sometimes stimulates that creativity in me. So sometimes I just go on Instagram and just check out those photographers whose work I respect and admire. Maybe someone like Big H. I'm a fan of Big H. His work is amazing. So when I see, when I see his pictures, I'm like, wow. I'm like, man, and then maybe watching movies as well. Sometimes when I see a really artistic movie, you know, something that is really inspiring, it just does something to me. Yeah, I do that a lot. When I see movies, I end up, I end up seeing all the creative angles, the light setup for the movies, and it gets annoying for my wife when I watch yeah. movies. Because <laughs> I post and I'm like, oh, did you see how they, how they framed that shot? And she'll be like, can we just press play now? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you one thing that I have been doing in the last two weeks because I just got a new camera. So you're having that new, new camera New camera vibes, vibes is, is upon me. In my mind, I'm like, yeah. you know, especially when money has left your account, you're like, man, this can't happen again. I'm not spending any more. So you're now focusing on your gear and what, what do you want to create with it? So one of the things I said I was going to do is I want to start creating short films, right? And to inspire me, what I decided to start doing is to start listening to original scores of movies okay, right so, so you know like the song theme of game of thrones if you go on apple music or if you go on youtube you will see soundtracks of all these great movies like inception lord of the rings like um, game of thrones and those things are all cellos and violins and it's just it's like almost like you so i i did it i did that because i want to feel like i want to feel cinematic <laughs> i said i wanted to feel cinematic <laughs> so like when that music is playing in my head I'm thinking of angles, I'm thinking of scenes from the movie. So I think that's helping my filmmaking now. Like, okay, just try this, eh? play the soundtrack of the Joker, right? And just hold your camera and, and walk around. You'll be, you'll be filming things like, you'll be feeling like- Oh, you listen to it, you listen to it yes, while I you're listen shooting. To it while, no, not just while I'm shooting, all day, even while I'm oh. working on my computer or reading or, okay, yeah, or when I go to the gym, yes. then when I pick mm. up my camera, I'm taking a stroll. I'm listening to those, because it, it's like putting me in that zone of, you know, but you know, sound is a very important sound part very for important, yeah. filmmaking. So, like, sound is a, sound is very important. Yeah, 
so I can understand where yeah. you're going with this. Like there are some songs you hear and they'll just inspire you. You just even for pictures too. There are some songs you hear and uh, like I used to know a, a photographer that used to have a, a curated playlist for um, weddings in the morning before he goes for the weddings that sets his mind in the right frame. You understand? And and that, that, that yeah, your your environment is yeah. not just about where you are, it's about like oh, your mental well. space, yes, uh, yeah. the energy and your vibe into around you, yeah. True, true, true. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, um, this conversation, we can't keep it for too long. I think we've touched on a couple of points, right, that I think should help anybody out there who is going through a creative block, who is feeling yeah. stuck. So, I feel like uh, just to highlight first things first, you have to be aware and know that there is a block to deal with it. Do you understand? cannot deal with what you're not aware of. You have to be self-conscious and so you need to you need to always know when you're suffering from a creative block, when you're feeling reluctant to go out there and shoot, when uh, every time you keep pushing forward or procrastinating that creative thing you want to do, that personal project. Sometimes it's a block, it's not just laziness. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So once once you now realize, okay, yes, I do have a block, then you first things first, speak to somebody about it. You understand? Usually somebody in your sphere, if, if you're a photographer, if you're a videographer, speak to someone in your space and say, well, I'm going to a person might or might not, but most likely if you talk to one or two people, you'll definitely come up with, ah, let's try and do this together or creative ways to come out of your funk, you understand? You can also experiment with new techniques, you can collaborate with others, and then, you understand, just do something, go out there and create basically, you understand? Sometimes you actually need to step back and take a break from everything, just stop shooting anything. Just watch movies, go out, take long walks, hang out with friends for one week or two. Sometimes you might just be burnt out. That's what's causing your block. You yeah. are just hope you've drained yourself, your energy. You yeah. understand? So you just need to go recoup, rejuvenate. Sometimes when you come back from a, a nice holiday, you're in the mood to create. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yeah, so that happens. So Correct. That's, yeah. To me, I, I think, think that, that, that think, helps. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, talking to people talking to someone about it, finding, uh, I, I, I think the last thing you mentioned, you know, it's, it's really resonated with me. Like sometimes all you just need to do is like take a break, like a complete break. Um, just like a couple of uh, last month, month of July, I took a break from Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for a whole 30 days. Like I deleted the apps from my phone. I put blockers on my browser. So even if you send me a link on WhatsApp to go to Instagram, I won't even be able to check it out. I did that for 30 days. The only thing I didn't leave out was YouTube and WhatsApp. But every other thing, and I, it, I think it really helped me because I was able to like get back into the gym a bit, go on walks, try cycling, and you know all of those things kind of refreshed me. And that's where the whole ginger, if you notice, if you've been following my YouTube channel, you'll see that for like many months, I didn't post anything, but this late July, I started again and I, I came back with a bang, like I was just dropping back to back. That's, that's, that's the, the creative juice came back, the drive came back, the energy came back. So I think taking a break is important, taking a, you know, a break. And um, I mean, for me, I would also recommend um, sitting down and, and trying to reconnect with your why. Like, why are you doing photography? Why do you love it? Is it simply just a side hustle? Is it just that you want to make money? Or do you really love creating? And if so, maybe you just need to reconnect or remind yourself about your passion. Like, like for me, I, could, I, I tell people I could do this for free. Uh, if, if, I, if, I, if I didn't have... We did this for free in the beginning. We did it for free in the beginning, you understand? I remember then at home, I used to follow my wife all over the kitchen. She's cooking. I would just be taking pictures all the time. Like, I just couldn't hold back. Like, so sometimes you need to reconnect with your why and remember why you jumped into the whole thing in the first place. And, um, and then personal projects, like for me, I still highly recommend getting a, doing a personal project. It could just be a challenge. Like give yourself a 30 day challenge to shoot for 30 minutes every day. Or like the one I want to do now is I want to go out with my camera every day for like a week. So I'm, I'm thinking of getting a strap. It's just going to hang around me. I'm not going to put pressure on myself to create, but I just want to see what happens if I put my camera and I go everywhere with it. When I go shopping, I'm going on my camera. When I go to church, when I go out for a walk, it's just there. So I want to see what that's going to do to me. So, you know, those kind of things. 
And again, remember you talked about the envi your environment, your internal environment. Maybe listen to some new kind of music, watch new kind of movies or look at movies in a different way. Go back and watch your favorite movies. You know, there might be something that you, or travel, go out to a new place. There might be something out there in the environment that would help you get your juice back. Yeah, so I'm not sure, but I think we've touched on most of the topics or most of the issues around creative block. And um, I hope the video added value to somebody. And at least for me, I think um, it was a good refresher, good talking about it with you. And um, I'm hoping that, um, you know, in the comment section, people are going to drop their own experiences, their own ideas around getting their creative juice back against unlocking the block. That's what you called it, right? Unlocking the block. Yeah, unlocking the block. <laughs> <laughs> unlocking, maybe that's, that maybe that'll be the title yeah. of the YouTube video. How to unlock the block. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying it'd be great doing my first YouTube video. Oh yeah, this, this is, is your this first is YouTube surreal video. and strange. Yeah, so I feel please. like I should have like an after party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I hope we're going to be seeing. I'm hoping, I hope it is the first of many. Like I'm hoping that this is going to open up like my my creative when it comes to creating YouTube content and push because I've always wanted to do it for a while, but I've been a little worried about uh, what are you going to put? Would you run out of what to talk about? Yeah. But yeah, I think basically I'm just going to go with the flow and just create and just put it out there. Yeah. You understand? And then hopefully something will happen. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to seeing your YouTube channel. More content on your channel. Yeah. So nice, nice talking with you, bro. There you have it, guys. Heavy and I just had a conversation around the creative block. I'm sure many of you, you know, can identify or you've had similar experiences. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video, share your thoughts in the comment section, and let us know what your own experiences have been. Don't forget to check out my guy's YouTube channel. Let's help grow the channel. This was his first time doing a face-to-face -face talking head video for YouTube. And so please get to his channel and please make sure you follow and subscribe to his channel. And um, yeah. Catch you in the next one.